We often hear about star explosions, or might have seen a few pictures of a star blowing into bits. But have you ever wondered, or does it ever come to your mind? When will the next supernova in our galaxy will occur? Well, it actually is really quite fascinating question to ask yourself. Like, is there any possibility of a star going supernova anytime soon? We request you to watch till the end as in this video, you'll get to know something absolutely interesting. Imaging yourself as an astronomer at the very beginning of the 17th century. Since the telescope hasn't been invented yet, you can only look at the night sky with your own eyes. Then, one day, you witness a magnificent sight. You see a big, bright, shining light in the sky. Over the next few weeks, a new star will be even brighter than Venus. It's so bright that you can see it even during the day. It stays for months, fading in brightness over time. In the year 1604, the German astronomer Johannes Kepler observed this phenomenon and other skywatchers across Europe, the Middle East and Asia observed the same thing. We now know that it wasn't actually a new star, but rather an explosion known as a supernova. A supernova is a massive explosion that takes place when certain stars have reached the end of their lives. As far as we can tell, the last supernova to occur within the Milky Way was in 1604, or at least the very last one that has been seen. There may have been others in the area since then, but they may have been hidden by gas and dust. The Crab Nebula, for example, was first seen by astronomers in 1054, but its light has been reaching Earth for far longer. In recent years, the supernova observed in 1987 in the Large Magellanic Cloud was the next best thing to Kepler's supernova and designated as 1987A. Many supernova in other galaxies have been documented by astronomers. These events can be seen with the naked eye and would have been completely missed by stargazers in Kepler's day. To put it another way, it has been a very long time, exactly 418 years, since we last witnessed a star exploding in our galaxy. Is it possible that a bright supernova could soon appear in our neighborhood? Approximately one to three stars should go supernova in our galaxy each century. So 400 years is a bit longer than one might think. However, Statistically, you can't say that we're overdue. When next supernova occurs, modern astronomers will be better prepared for it than Kepler was, or even astronomers from only a few decades ago. Scientists today have telescopes that can record light that can be seen. These instruments will demonstrate what it would be like to see a supernova with our own eyes if we were able to get close enough to examine it. However, we also have the telescopes that are able to record infrared light, which is light whose colors go beyond the end of the visible spectrum that corresponds to the color red. Because of the longer wavelengths of infrared light, it is able to travel through gas and dust with greater ease than visible light can, which enables it to expose targets that could be invisible to conventional telescopes. For instance, infrared data is the primary type of data recorded by the James Webb Space Telescope. The electromagnetic spectrum includes both visible as well as infrared light. However, neutrinos, which are subatomic particles, are also emitted by supernova, and modern detectors can capture these as well. In addition, scientists now have detectors which can record gravitational waves that are thought to be emitted by exploding stars. According to Cornell University astronomer Ray J. Award Hanna, it is currently expected that a supernova explosion will produce electromagnetic waves gravitational waves, and even neutrinos. This would be an amazing source of knowledge and information. Scientists have talked about two different kinds of supernova. Type 1 supernova occur when a white dwarf star snags enough material from a partner star to trigger a nuclear chain reaction, causing the white dwarf to explode and send debris flying through space. An example of a type 2 supernova, also known as a core collapse supernova, occurs when a star has used up all of its nuclear fuel supply and afterwards collapses under the force of its own gravity. The collapse then bounces, which sets off an explosion. Both types of supernova have the potential to temporarily eclipse the light of an entire galaxy. However, type II supernovae are of great importance since they emit not just light, but also massive amounts of neutrinos. Astronomer Kate Schulberg from Duke University argues that Neutrino emission can begin before the explosion occurs. According to Schulberg, it is possible to observe early pre-supernova neutrinos before the core collapse occurs if the star is close enough. She explains that neutrino detectors would most likely pick up the signal hours or perhaps days before the blast itself became apparent. Like for example, 
if the red giant Betelgeuse were to go supernova. There has been significant debate among astronomers about whether or not Betelgeuse is about to explode due to its weakening in recent years, with some speculating that it is due to clouds of dust or sunspot activities on the star's surface. However, within the next 100,000 years, the massive star is predicted to explode. In the event that neutrinos originating from a distant galactic supernova make their way to Earth, astronomers will be notified immediately by the Supernova Early Warning System, also known as SNEWS, which is comprised of an array of neutrino detectors. In the early 2000s, Schulberg collaborated on the development of the first version of SNEWS. Currently, Astronomers are gearing up for SNEWS 2.0, which will perform the same role as its forerunner but with enhanced triangulation capabilities. In order to pinpoint the supernova's location in the sky so that optical devices can get a better look, the network will collect data from seven separate detectors spread over six continents, including Antarctica. Neutrino science was just getting started when 1987A blew up, but three detectors were still able to record 24 neutrinos. If a supernova erupts within our galaxy right now, hundreds or possibly millions of neutrinos will be recorded by the global network of detectors. If a falling star is massive enough, it may generate a black hole in which case, as Trollberg explains, the entire explosion fizzles out. In such a scenario, the neutrino stream would cease abruptly. That would be incredibly cool because you'd see this really severe cutoff, indicating the formation of a black hole. Then. Astronomers might use known star catalogs to determine which star had vanished. A blank, a missing star, could be the location of a newly generated black hole. The third component, the successful observation of gravitational waves from a galactic supernova, would finish off a trifecta. Einstein predicted more than a century ago that huge bodies undergoing acceleration would generate gravitational waves, which are distortions in space-time. They were initially identified in 2015. Black hole and neutron star mergers are responsible for the gravitational waves seen so far. However, once a supernova occurs in our galaxy, it too should be detected. Because gravitational waves radiate from a supernova center, they'll tell us how stars burst. Astronomers have been simulating supernova explosions with computers for decades, but many details are still hard to understand. According to Radis, gravitational wave data could assist shed light on the process. Could a close supernova endanger life on Earth? Yes, in theory, but the explosion would need to be very close, and there are currently no such stars in the neighborhood that are in danger of exploding. That's a fortunate thing, because the radiation blast from a close supernova would be terrible. Field says that the supernova would send out ultraviolet rays, X-rays, and gamma rays over a period of weeks. These rays might not reach the ground, but they would still damage the ozone layer that protects the Earth. Thus, it would not transform us into the Incredible Hulk, but it would remove the ozone layer from the stratosphere. According to Fields, if the ozone layer weren't there, the sun's lethal UV radiation would permeate the entire planet. This would have the potential to wipe off phytoplankton in the oceans, and the impacts would work their way up the food chain, perhaps causing a mass extinction. During the history of our planet, something like this might have happened. Rocks from the Devonian epoch contain plant spores that seem sunburned as though blasted by ultraviolet light leading fields and his colleagues to speculate that this mass extinction may have been caused by a supernova explosion. This event occurred around 360 million years ago. But supernovas don't just kill, they also make new things. Many of the heavy elements necessary for life, including oxygen, calcium, and iron, are thought to have originated in the nuclear processes that take place deep within exploding stars and are then dispersed throughout space by the blast waves they generate. An eminent astronomer once said that we're formed of star stuff. Thus, a supernova would be the pinnacle of cosmic generosity for scientists like Fields. He says, I really hope that during my lifetime, there will be a supernova in the Milky Way galaxy. If you are a space enthusiast like me and want to explore the mystery of the universe to its fullest, I highly suggest you to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming interesting videos like this one. Also, if you enjoyed watching this, please like this video and press the bell icon to be the first to watch our newly uploaded videos. Thanks for watching guys, but before you leave, we got more amazing stuff for you to watch and discover some magnificent things taking place around the cosmos.